Hi guys, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about those panels that is rising on the wings, sometimes during flight and every time during landing. Okay, we're going to be talking about what they are, what we use them for, and towards the end of the video, I'm going to be talking about some actual handling characteristics that involves these things. So make sure you stay tuned to the end. I think you are going to like this one. This episode is brought to you in cooperation with SimTech in Dublin. And if you want to check out their website, I have a link to it below in the description. Right guys, so, uh, what we're going to be talking about today is uh, the flight spoilers and the ground spoilers on the 737-800. Okay. Now, you will have seen them if you've been sitting on the overwing exits. Uh, definitely during landing, you would have noticed that there are these panels that opens up on the wings. Uh, there are four of them on each wing that are moving during flight. And then there's an additional two that comes up just on the ground during the landing roll or if you've ever seen a rejected takeoff. So these um, panels, they're called flight spoilers, and the ones that comes up during the landing, they're called ground spoilers. These spoilers have essentially three different reasons for existing, okay? They are driven by the hydraulic system A and hydraulic system B. So the 737 has three different hydraulic systems. It has the A, the B, and the standby. And those hydraulic systems are governing all flight controls on the 737. They are helping each other out so that if we lose a hydraulic system, for example, A, we will still have the remaining spoilers on the B system working. So as with all the systems on the 737 and all modern aircraft, you will have a redundancy in the systems, which means that if one fails, you will still have the other. You might not have as many. So for example, if the hydraulic system A fails, then the second, the fourth, the ninth, and the eleventh flight spoiler will not be working, which means that you will have slightly fewer spoilers, which means that that will have an impact on your landing distance, for example. But you will still be able to use them for their primary purpose. So what is the primary purpose then? The primary purpose of the spoilers in flight is normally roll control. Okay, so roll control on a modern jetliner is achieved by primarily the ailerons, which are the uh, rudders that you can see on the outmost part of the wings. And secondarily, we have the flight spoilers. So the way that the flight spoilers work is that they move in synchronization with the ailerons to reduce the lift on the wing that we want to go downwards. So if you look out on the wings during flight and you see during the turn, you will see that the aileron is moving. For example, if you're turning right, the aileron on the right side will move up slightly and so will the flight spoilers. So by doing so, they reduce the lift on that wing, which means that that wing drops and the aircraft start turning together with, of course, activation of the rudder as well, which is something that the yaw dumper does, which is something we'll talk about in a different podcast. So roll control is the primary purpose during flight of the flight spoilers. Uh, you can fly the 737 only using the flight spoilers. And this is what happens if we have, for example, jammed flight controls. So if the flight controls jams, then the, the pilots can break them out, as in applying full force to it. And depending on which pilot manages to break loose, they will either control only the ailerons or only the flight spoilers. But in any case, even if you have a jam in the system, you will still be able to control the aircraft. So as you can see, once again, there is a redundancy to the systems. So the secondary purpose of the, uh, of the spoilers, or the flight spoilers, is something that you might have noticed sometimes uh, in flight that all of a sudden, the descent after the descent has started, you start to feel a light shudder in the aircraft. So it feels like light turbulence, but not really. And if you look out on the wings then, you will see that the flight spoilers are extended. Now in this case, they are going to be extended in the same amount on both wings. And what you're basically seeing then is the pilots using the speed brake. 
Okay, so there is a lever in the cockpit which the pilots can move and when we pull it to flight detent the flight spoilers comes up to what's called a flight detent which is not fully up but partially up so much that they provide drag but they don't really spoil the full lift of the wing. Okay, And we use the flight spoilers in the speed brake mode when we have for example a shortcut. Okay, the 737 is extremely effective, the wing is extremely effective, which means that one of the major problems we have when we will teach pilots to fly it and when we fly it is to get rid of the energy. So we are planning during the descent phase on a certain number of track miles from where we are to the airport. Okay, we need those track miles in order to get the aircraft both to descend down and also to decelerate enough for us to take flaps out. Now, during that descent, if air traffic control would come in and be nice to us and give us a shortcut, that means that we now have less track miles available to us to, boot, to do that, to decelerate and to descend, which means that we have to add drag to achieve it. And we do that using the speed brakes. So if you feel that, you see that the um, spoilers are coming up, well then you know that it's likely that the pilots have gotten a shortcut or they have been held up in altitude, maybe because of traffic passing below or something like that. So that's what we use it for secondarily. All right. Now, the third use is probably what you've noticed the most, and that is when we touch down. Okay. Now, what you have to understand is that the primary mode we have for, for stopping the aircraft once we're down on the runway are our wheel brakes. Okay. We do have thrust reverses, we do have flight spoilers and ground spoilers, they all help, but the thing that is going to get the aircraft to stop are the wheel brakes. Now, when we touch down, you will notice that as soon as the aircraft touches down, the flight spoilers will come up to maximum. Now, this is beyond flight detent, this is on ground detent, so it's more than what you would have seen in flight, and also the two ground spoilers on each wing is going to rise and they are going to rise on an even higher angle so they're basically almost uh, vertical. The reason for this is A, add extra drag, okay, but B and most importantly it's there to reduce the lift that the wing are producing in order for the full weight of the aircraft to sink down on the brakes and make the brakes more effective. Because otherwise, if the lift dumpers weren't there, if the flight and the ground spoilers weren't there, then um, when the anti-skid starts, the anti-skid will almost immediately start skidding because the, the aircraft is still being held up partially by the wings and the braking would not be as effective. So the lift dumpers, the flight spoilers and the ground spoilers, they do this to basically destroy the lift of the wings and enable us to apply full braking without the anti-skid jumping in and stopping the deceleration. So essentially, that is what you see. When you look out on the wings and you see the, uh, the spoilers coming up, it's either of those three things. Either the aircraft is turning, the aircraft is being kept high, so we want to add drag to get down quicker, or we're on the ground or we've done a rejected takeoff. In either of those cases, the, both the flight spoilers and the ground spoilers will come up. Now, some precautions as well. Uh, when, when we do, for example, crosswind takeoffs, uh, we do put a little bit of aileron into the wind as we're rolling down the runway. And that is to make sure that the aircraft, by the wind, doesn't start to bank on the runway. Okay, we want to keep the wings level. But we have to be a little bit careful because of the way that the flight spoilers work. So not put too much aileron into the wind, because if we do, we will get spoiler deflection. And spoiler deflection means extra drag, means a longer takeoff distance. So when we teach uh, crosswind takeoffs in the 737, you're not supposed to put more than about one and a half units on the yoke into the wind. And that's about 10 degrees of aileron input. Because so if you do, then you will get that spoiler deflection. And this is also why during the actual rotation, most of the time when we rotate, the wind will have a bigger effect on the aircraft, which means that we will have to increase the aileron input to keep ourselves wings level. 
we will get spoiler deflection then. And that's why we are extra careful when we do crosswind takeoffs to rotate nights and slowly with about one and a half to two degrees per second to avoid getting a tail strike. Because the 737, 800, 900 are very long and they are more prone to um, tail strikes, to, to uh, tail strikes than the earlier and the smaller 737 types. And this is something I'm going to discuss in an upcoming podcast about what to do in case you have a tail strike. Guys, I hope you like this video. This is a little bit more technical than the uh, earlier ones I've done. Uh, I've gotten some feedback that you guys want more of that. So as always, give me the comments below. Tell me what you like, tell me what you would like to do more of. And I can promise you that there are some really exciting stuff coming up in the channel. So make sure that if you haven't already, that you have subscribed, tick that little uh, notification bell. Also very important because if you don't tick the notification bell, even if you've subscribed, you might not get the notifications of new videos. I hope I'll see you inside of the Mentor Aviation app. We'll be chatting away after the release of this video. And you can chat with other pilots and uh, aviation enthusiasts in there as well. For now, I'm hoping you all are having a fantastic day. I wish you the very best of luck with your ongoing endeavors. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.